All right, welcome back to CAD E's Tutorials on Revit Architecture 2012. Um, let's go ahead and get started drawing. Let's get you being productive here. Go ahead and go under the Revit application menu. Hover over new, or you can hit the little black triangle there, and project. And we're going to come over here and pick the residential default. Now there's going to be certain levels that are in here that we're not going to use. It's going to be a very simple building. I mean, it automatically loads. You can see with footing, basement, basement electrical, finished floor, framing. Um, matter of fact, if you want to, let's just go ahead and do this. We're not going to worry about a basement. Hold down the control bar, basement electrical. We're not going to do electrical. Um, framing, second floor electrical, second floor flame, framing. Let's just take those and delete them. So you can just right click and hit delete. Those of you that are now gone. And we can easily recreate those if we need to. You can notice uh, it's bold first floor, so that's what we're on. So what we're gonna do first, now again, this is gonna be a simple square building basically. So there's really no use for reference planes, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in any way. If you have a very complex building or have a building with some you know different angles coming off of 90 degrees, you're gonna wanna use reference planes. Reference planes are nothing more than construction lines. You can lock stuff to them, you can dimension to them. They are non-plottable by default in Revit, so you can have all your reference planes in there and don't want to have to worry about turning them off. They won't plot. You can name them a pretty good rule of thumb. If you want a reference plane to be kept, for instance, uh, and I'll show you, if you cut a structural member to a reference plane and you delete that reference plane the cut goes along with it so the structural member will go back to the way it was that's for doing like angles and such um, if you want to keep it it's a good idea to start naming it a lot of firms do this if it's not named it's fair game to be deleted because the other guy working on the project behind you has no idea what it's for so get into a good, good habit of using reference planes and naming them if you want them to be kept if not you can delete them after you're done so we'll go up here and you can see the shortcut for reference plane is RP or you can click it off your, um, I have mine on my quick access toolbar. Yours would actually be here under the work plane, reference plane right there. So I'm just gonna draw a reference plane, north, south, east, west basically, just to get some grids in there. And we're gonna do some basic exterior walls. So of course, you're gonna start a building, you need some walls. So I'm going to click on the wall tool and I want to go ahead and use this brick on wood stud. It's loaded by default. So go ahead and select that type of wall. And there's a couple different ways to do walls. You can draw lines. You can do a rectangle. Um, I want to use the reference planes on purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pick lines tool. And my building is going to be 24 feet by 28 feet, let's say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this half of 24, which would be 12 feet. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. You can see that little blue line. If I go to the right of this reference plane, that's snapping that right where I need it. The other thing I want to do is on exterior walls, I never use wall center line. I almost always use finished face exterior. That way the overall dimensions of my building will always be the same if I happen to change wall types from brick to, I don't know, stucco. Of course, stucco's thinner. I don't want my building itself getting smaller. The inside would actually grow a little bit. So I use finished face exterior. And then let's go ahead and connect this to the roof. That is my level that I want to connect it to. So if I come here and just select, there's one wall. Select here, there's another wall. And then up and down, it said we were 28 feet. So half of that would be 14 feet. And I can do that, and I can do that. And there's basically my building. Now what am I gonna do with this? Uh, we're gonna use a trim command. Now if you go to modify trim, which is right there, TR, as you can see, is the shortcut key. So if I was gonna type in TR, you're just gonna simply pick the size of the wall you wanna keep. Well, there's my outside corner, so I wanna keep that side of the wall and that side of the wall. And there you go, it trims it. Same thing with these two. Now if I was to pick this side and this side, see how I did it backwards? That's not what I want. I want 
this side and that side. So there you go, there's your building. Remember, I'll go ahead and put this on medium. I can see a little bit more detail. So there's my, there's my building outline. Simple enough, I've already got the startings of a, of a building going on. Now, one thing I do want to bring your attention to, you can see this thick line for the exterior of my wall is missing right there. That's because that wall join. Sometimes Revit will do this. It's not a big deal. There's a wall join tool right here. You can change how it tells you all the different types of wall joints that you have. You can do a butt miter squared off. Um, if I was to pick that, and you can see it hover around that intersection, select it, and I want to sit miter. And then click out in the white space, we'll cancel it. And there you go, fix that. Same thing over here. I'm still active in the command. Select it, choose miter, click out here in the white space. And if you hit modify, modify is basically escape. Same thing. So you can hit the escape key a couple times or you can just hit the modify button. It just puts Revit ready to do another command. And that fix that wall join. Sometimes Revit does it, sometimes it doesn't. I think it has to do with how you trim. Um, but just keep an eye out for it. You can always change your wall joins. It's not a big deal. So there you go. I've got some exterior walls. Now, I had to go up to the roof level. Let me show you a little something about levels. If I go to my east elevation, remember I can click it here in the project browser. Or I can simply double click here. There's my east elevation. You notice this wall started on the first floor, which is right there. And I made it attached to the roof, which is right there. Now, that's, that's my levels. That's telling it to attach to that level. Now if I wanted to have 10 foot ceilings, I can come in here and edit this to be 10 foot. And then I want to have a, kind of do some math in my head, say I want a 10 foot second floor. Um, that would be 20 foot, right? So you go 20 feet and boom, and you notice that my wall stretched up with my roof layer. I'm sorry, roof level. The wall is attached to this roof level. That's the connected height. It's telling you when you pick this wall, you can look in the properties. It's going from base constraint, first floor, top constraint, roof. And that's what you want in this particular project. Now I'm going to make another change because I realized, you know what, I'm going to have a floor system in here. It's probably going to be about, I don't know, say 12 inches thick. So I want 10 foot clear for my first floor. So I want this finished floor height from second floor to first floor to actually be, let's say 11 feet. Oops. So if I make that 11 feet and I still want it to be 10 feet here, that's gonna to have to be 21 feet. And that's how easy it is to change your heights and levels. You can do it at any time during the project. I can bring them back down. It's not a big deal. All these right here are from finished floor, all these Elevations are always from finished floor. Now notice over on this end, I've also got a temporary dimension in there. I could very easily say, okay, I want that to be 12 feet in between floors. And it will automatically give me 12 feet here. And this, of course, will change to 23 feet. 12 feet above 11 feet. But I just want 10 feet. So I'll put that back down to 10 feet. So that's a little quick thing about levels. So let's go ahead and continue. So I'm still on my first floor. Let's go ahead and put in some more walls. And this time we're going to do some interior walls. Let's do uh, four and a half inch partition walls. And right now what I'm going to do, you can see I've got that temporary dimension. I want 11 foot four inches to the center of my wall. Now if you notice when I'm snapping, if I pull it goes six inch in increments. If I zoom out further, I have to go out even further than that. See, it's going four foot, 12 foot. If I pull a little bit more, 20 foot, 24 foot. The further in you zoom, the tighter your increments will become. See, those are six inch increments. If I zoom in even further, now I've got it every inch. And that's a setting that you can come over here under manage, objects and snaps. This right here, dimension snap increments four foot, then it goes to six inches, one inch, and then quarter inch, and you can add more to it. Same thing with your angular dimension snaps that I showed you earlier. You can change those right here and add to them. And that's all based on zoom percentage. So the further out your zoom, you don't want to go an inch by an inch when you're zoomed this far out, and Revit knows that. So 
That's another cool thing to keep an eye out for. So yes, interior walls, we can go back into the wall command. Do my four and a half inch partition walls. And I usually just kind of eyeball quick, you know, pretty close. We'll do 11 by 11 foot six because I've got my temporary dimensions so I can still that's right on the line so it's hard to see but that's 11 foot I want this to be to the outside here and I want that to be 11 foot 4 there's 11 foot 4 this one let's go ahead and make it 11 foot 8 I'm just kind of arbitrarily doing these just to kind of show you that goes through the center line already I moved it to the outside there and if, if you can't pick something tab key will rotate through different pick points until you see it highlight in purple and then let go. Make that one 11 foot 8 and there's my room. So let's go ahead and we'll continue this room over here. And there's a couple ways we can do this. I can come in here and extend it to this wall, that wall. So now it's extent and then I can come in here and split this wall right there so now it's two separate walls and then go back to my trim command and then that leaves my other wall there I can also just like I created these walls off this plane I can create this wall and I can do an offset let's say four foot this is called four foot two inches and there it is so you can offset off a wall, you can offset off a reference plane, there's a lot of things you can do. And then again, you want to double check your dimensions. See that that also, I want it to be four foot two inches instead of four foot four and a quarter. So there's my, there's my hallway right there. Let's go ahead and add a little nook here for a washer and dryer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wall and I'm gonna come back five foot six and I'm just gonna that's the beautiful thing about Revit. You don't really need to be perfectly accurate because you've got your temporary dim dimensions right here. I want to make that five foot six, and I want this to be, I don't know, two foot. Let's make it two foot too deep. And you can put a washer and dryer right there. So now we've got some basic walls. This will be a bedroom, a little bathroom right here. Uh, washer and dryer will go there. I have no doors. So I'm going to go to my door tab. Now doors are host families so there is some doors already loaded in here. If I didn't like, if I didn't have the correct door loaded I can always go to load family. It's going to open up the default US Imperial content and I can go to doors and these are all the doors and you can see the little preview here that are loaded in Revit. All these doors come in Revit already. So if I wanted to, let's say, put a, let's do a glass door, some side light with some lights. There you go. I want that door. Well, it's loading it. And of course, it's not going to load every size because of file size restrictions. Let's go ahead and do a 36 by 84 inch door there. And you just, you can see it's on the wall. If I go to the top of the wall, it'll flip. If I hit space bar, it'll flip side to side. So let's just go ahead and put that door in and it cuts it and tags it automatically. I can turn the tag on placement off if I chose to leave it on and there is your door. And of course I can always take my temporary dimensions and I can let's make that 10 foot 6 inches. Why not? Let's move it over an inch. I can always place it that way. So there you have it. If I wanted to make this door Say I wanted to make it a 42 inch door. Well I can go to edit type and make sure it's not already in there. It's not. Very simple. Duplicate it. Now be be careful. You always want to duplicate. You got to be very uh, stringent on this. If, if I was to just change the dimensions on this 36 by 84 door and not duplicate it, any one of these doors, since I'm editing the type of the door, any door named 36 by 84 would change. That's probably not what I want. I want to duplicate it and create another door. Let's call it 42 by 84. And everything's going to be the same except for the width will be 42 inches. Okay. 
and there you have it now it's a 42 by 84 door you can see when you pick it it's telling you it's a 42 by 84 and we can even measure the width it should be 42 inches so that's a little something on families uh, that's putting in a door on the next tutorial we're going to go ahead and finish up the bathroom put some more doors in the front door we'll put a fireplace in here some stairs and work on the second level thanks for joining us uh, visit caddies.com and hope to see you on the next tutorial thank you